G'day kids, Briggsy here on the coffee run today with Peter Bock. How are you, mate? I'm great, Rowan. Thanks for thanks for having me. You can call me Briggsy, mate. All right. Briggsy's Sorry, Briggsy. fine. No, that's fine. Everyone else I'm does. Trying to be professional in my work shirt. So. <laughs> no, don't worry. Where do you work? Uh, Mountain Creek State High School. So we're just setting off sail from there now. So. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, I forgot to mention that you're an AFL boundary umpire. For people who don't know you, do AFL boundary umpiring. How many games have you done so far, mate? Well, I actually got asked that question this morning, and I, I don't know if I've done around somewhere between 20 and 30. 20 and 30. It's not high on your priority list oh, to know busy. how many you do. You've got other things on I, your mind. I do. I have been ticking them off, counting them during season time, but um, sort of been pushed to the back of my mind a little bit lately. But yeah, fair enough. It's all good. Yeah. Now, do you remember your first game uh, you I, ever did? I do. Um, so 2016, round nine uh, at the Gabba, Brisbane versus Collingwood. Mm -hmm. um, I think early on, I think I had more touches than, than Brisbane did. <laughs> so it wasn't a great night for, for Brisbane back then. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's certainly, certainly a step up from any sort of umpiring and sort of game experience I've been involved in before. Nervous? Very nervous. Yeah. I, I, I think probably more nervous because everyone asks you how you're feeling and they ask yeah, you if you're nervous. So true. you get 15 people asking how nervous you are and you go, hang on, actually now that you mention it, I am pretty nervous. I was trying not to think so. about it, but now that you mention it, yeah, yeah, it sort of messes with you a bit, doesn't it? Um, so you've done a, your background to get you into the AFL boundary umpiring lane. I uh, did a fair bit of athletics as well. And what level? I know you got to quite some high levels with that. Oh... Uh, I competed for Queensland at nationals in both cross country and sort of 1500 meter running. Yeah. You know, a little bit of steeplechase when I was a junior. Um, probably the highest level I reached was a, a national final back in 2009 for 1500. So yeah. that's sort of the. Highest. What sort of time are we doing for 1500? Uh, well, nothing. Nothing that's going to threaten any Australian team. But 3:49 was my best it's time. Pretty for solid 1500. effort, mate. I'd... It, it, it does amaze me though, people like yourself, I'm sorry to pick on you, ah, it was pretty slow, 349, but I don't think my car can even do 1500 <laughs> in that time, mate, so it's a pretty well hooking, and because I was watching you do a 5k type trial uh, earlier this year, ran, was it 16 oh, flat Yeah, about Brendan Press? 16 on the knocker, yeah, this yeah. year, so they're always tough, the time trials. Um, How do you go about when you going into a time trial, do you prepare yourself as far as food, mentally, how does that work to go into a 5k time trial? Uh, I think what's fortunate too, like for being a teacher, we've we've had the summer sort of holiday, so I've had four or five weeks off to get fit and then yeah. that time comes back, we're actually back at work, so it's good you're all, you get the break and then you're back into your normal routine, so I think you have to, you have, to have your normal routine yeah. moving forward and not sort of think too much about it because it is just another run and it's just a sort of a test to see where your, your fitness is at um, food wise it's just the same as a game you just pre prepare the same as what you would for a game make sure you're not eating too close yeah um, and your you warm-up wants to be something similar to game day as well but then you've just got to prepare yourself to hurt I think yeah, um, yeah. that's sort of the, di the different mindset with the game you've you've got to be sort of relaxed and calm and watch things unfold in front of you whereas in a time trial, you've just got to be prepared to hurt. So maybe yeah. you need a bit, bit more fired up, perhaps. But because a lot of people, I don't know why it is, they go, "Oh, we're doing a five k time trial," and they just freak out that they, it's just another run. And, but that's a good point. Just be prepared yeah. to push that extra effort to, to impress, I guess. And ideally, it, it doesn't hurt the whole way. So if you're running a, a five k time trial, hopefully it doesn't hurt in the first few minutes. So you've got a few yeah. minutes to sort of relax into it. Yeah, um, and even the 3k too. If you're doing a 3k time trial, there's still a bit of time where you do relax and warm into it. And doesn't doesn't hurt for every minute, every step of the way. Thank yeah, goodness. yeah. One other thing, mate. You obviously got into AFL footy through the school. Mountain Creek did a fair bit of coaching uh, with the girls mainly, and Justin Pritchard coached the boys. Yep. Um, so that's obviously give you a fair background of knowledge of the game and so on. You. Uh, got Mountain Creek into the AFL Sunshine Coast Juniors a couple of years ago. So tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, we had the fortunate opportunity. We had lots of girls playing uh, school footy and on the back of our participation numbers, we, we got asked to put a team into the local competition. There was sort of a, a, a spot there for another team to even the draw up. So we we jumped at that and um, had some girls play right through the 15s and finish right up to when it was under 18s too. So 
girls got a fair few years in there. Yeah. Um, and then we're still, we've sort of ebbed and flowed like most of the other clubs on the coast with, with numbers wise. We um, still had, we might have had about 30 girls from our school playing in the competition this year. Yeah. Um, so if, it's, you can see sort of a bit of a change too with the, the girls footy now. Once, once upon a time when we first started, you've got soccer players playing their second sport or netballers playing their True. second sport, dancers. But now we're, we're really starting to see girls have AFL as their number one sport. Which yeah. is really exciting for the for the code. Yeah, well, it's absolutely taken off, hasn't it? And with the AFLW uh, competition as well. So it's um, and you talked about girls playing the school football and trying to get that transition of them going 